Hello, my name is Armin. I'm a product specialist with Notch. In this tutorial, we'll build a field iMega effect based on particles. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need is to build a small particle system to drive the fields. I'm going to type in root and I'm going to choose particle root. Now, since particles is quite a vast subject of its own, it has its own particle root and everything concerning particles will spawn from it. Now we need an image emitter. I'm typing image emitter and I see that I have two options. In this case, I want to use the orange one, image emitter for particles. Now, some naming conventions are the same for quite a few tools in Notch and the color code corresponds with various systems that it should work with. So in this case, we need an image emitter that is orange and works with particle root. And as I connect the image emitter, I see that it outputs a white quad, but it still comes in hashed out red. It's hashed out red because it's still missing some information. Now that very information is a proxy video that we're going to use. So I just pulled in a video loader from a resources and that's just a band playing. That's exactly what we're going to use to spawn particles from. So I'm going to grab video loader. I'm going to pipe it to the first input video node. Now, as you see, nothing is really rendering on the screen just yet. And that is because we're missing a renderer. So I'm going to type in renderer and I'm going to choose point renderer. Now we're starting to see some information on the screen. So we are spawning uh, particles with the video, but particles are not following the motion of the video. We can address that. Let's grab optical flow. Let's connect this optical flow with a video loader. So video loader to optical flow and let's take a look to what it does. So optical flow basically calculates motion vectors going back and forward and that allows particles to stick with it and move together with the video. So optical flow has to be plugged into the second input of image emitter motion video node. And as we do, we start to see that particles are actually moving together with the video. Now for optical flow to fulfill its task, it doesn't really require an HD signal. So we can save some power and optimize by introducing down sampling in between. I'm typing down sample, I'm going to pull it to the scene and I'm going to pipe it in between video loader and optical flow. So control shift and I'm going to unhook this link. Video loader to down sample from down sample to optical flow. So now on a down sample, we can make sure to optimize and decrease the quality. So I'm going to set it to two and that's going to have the quality. That's more than enough for optical flow to fulfill its task. Great. So now we have a working chain. Uh, there is a couple of things that needs to be changed in the image emitter for this to look better. First, uh, image emitter is not respecting the 16 by 9 nature of this video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change a value of scale X. Here I'm going to type in a small formula, 16 divided by 9, to get a correct aspect ratio in correspondence with this video. Now, we don't have any alpha channel uh, in this video, so in a pixel call, instead of alpha channel, I'm going to choose luminance. And if I tick off, I start to see that there is a little outline of particles sticking to the edge. We can fix that. Let's add a kill box effect. Kill box effector. Kill box effector takes out the particles from undesired areas. So let's connect it to the particle root. Now this kill box effect should probably follow the shape of the video. So I'm going to type in the same formula, 16 divided by 9. And as you see, that's exactly the opposite of what we need. So in the kill box effector, I'm going to choose kill mode instead of inside, outside. Now it's starting to look much better. In fact, I'm going to grab kill box effector and via the uniform scaler, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. There, now I got rid of all the sticky particles on the edges. So this scene is a little bit more optimized and all these particles that were on the edge are spawning in all the area of the, of the simulation. Right, so I think we need one more node to move forward, further, and that's camera. I'm typing in camera and I'm going to connect it to the root. As you see, it came into the center of the graph. I'm going to enable the, the grid to see it better. So Alt G. So for us to see this simulation through camera, all we need to do is offset this camera on the position Z. I'm going to disable the grid and I'm going to hit zero for the rendering camera. So as I pull it back, I'm starting to fill the canvas. There, I think this is gonna work. 
All right, I think we're ready to move on to field system. So I'm going to type in root yet again, and I'm going to choose field root. I'm going to connect it to the root of the scene. Now field root by default comes in as a quad as well. So let's address that. Let's make it into a 16 by nine surface. So 16 divided by nine on the scale X. Now we're filling the canvas. Great. So for these two systems to communicate, we need an intermediate node. In this case, it's going to be particle emitter for fields. I'm grabbing particle emitter. I'm connecting it to the field root. Now particle emitter has the first input called particle node, and we can connect either particle root or a specific image emitter there. I'm going to connect particle root. So for us to see a field simulation, we need a renderer for fields as well. So I'm going to type in renderer and I'm going to choose field renderer. Great simulation started to work. I think for the sake of clarity at this given moment, I'm going to disable the point render. So control one to hide it. And I'm going to work a little bit on the very fields. So first thing we can do, we can increase the quality. The default of the width and height in field system is 256 by 256. We can easily match that to 1920 by 1080. This starts to look a little bit better. In fact, we can address the way the actual sprite looks. Now, if I pan out and zoom in, I would see that all these little particles are in the shape of a quad a square. So let's change that. In a particle emitter of fields, I have a texture drop down. I'm going to choose circle.dds instead. It starts to look better. Now these particles are not round. So I'm going to change the particle scale y with the same formula, 16 divided by 9. And all of a sudden we have a spherical sprite. Great. So this very sprite can be found in your documents. Notch. Sample projects, sample resources. All right, I'm going to come back to the render cam by hitting zero. I'm kind of happy with this simulation. I think it's time to add a couple of effectors. So I'm going to start with curl noise effector for the fields. It's a little bit harsh. Maybe I'll reduce the speed and noise size. Let's maybe make it 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 here as well. Now we're not restricted to using only effectors for field system. We might as well add some effectors to the particle system as well. Let's grab turbulence. So turbulence effector for particles. There we go. So all of a sudden uh, effectors that are working for fields and for particles can work hand in hand making changes to this simulation. We are not restricted to just one render too. So instead of rendering just with a field render, we might as well add some kind of a render for the particles. I'm going to go for geometry connection render. I'm going to connect it to the particle root. Now I'm not necessarily keen on seeing the triangle. So I'm going to untick draw triangles and I'm going to expand the tab of lines. Let's enable lines, let's reduce their alpha and let's use vertex colors. There we go. Now it's definitely getting somewhere. And I think now it's quite a time for you to take the simulation, apply some creative effects and take it further. Thank you for watching.